really good. <laughs>
as the refugees. We were welcome in this country. This cause welcomed us. And still it continues. That shows that Scotland is a very, very compassionate nation. Scotland is a country when hundreds of thousands of Scots were marching against the war in Afghanistan, that imperialist British and American wars, which killed 1.5 million people in Afghanistan for the past 40 years. A million people were drowned in, in their bloodbaths in Iraq, again on the basis of lies, and the Scots were dragged into that illegal world. So we want the type of Scotland which is free of nuclear weapons. We want a, a, a sort of Scotland which is free of tribal. We want the sort of Scotland which is a compassionate country for everyone, not only for the Scots. And the Scots are a very proud nation. You know, this is the, the, the climate of fear and hate. And imagine, you know, having Boris Johnson, a mini uh, uh, Trump, running the United Kingdom, and we are going to be dragged into another illegal war, this time probably with Iran. So we want an independent Scotland, a Scotland which caters for everyone, a Scotland, a Scotland which does not involve in illegal wars, a Scotland which care about their citizens, a Scotland which care about their future generation, a Scotland which cares, you know, not only uh, for Scots, but around the world. And the Scots and Scotland can back this. If you look around smaller countries, they are very successful in the United Kingdom. I think this is about time. This is about time, no matter what happens, that Scotland part company and part this abusive marriage with the United Kingdom. If we are all here today and we were on one, you know, voice that Scotland should be part company and the Scottish government which is led by Nicola Sturgeon should announce very soon uh, a referendum uh, ND2 ND and this is about time. This is about time that we do not delay the independence movement anymore. We do not deny the, the rights of millions of Scots. Imagine 80%, 80% of the Scottish representation in the Westminster is occupied by Scots. And yet they are telling us that you have no power. You know, you have no mandate. What sort of mandate do you want to see? Hundreds of thousands of people marching on the streets, telling Boris Johnson, you know, that you are not welcome in this country. What sort of mandate do you want when 62% of the population in this country tell Boris Johnson that we do not want to leave Europe. We would, we would like to be part of Europe and we would like to be part of our bigger world. So thank you. This is not the end. This is just the start. And our message is to the First Minister that she should have declared an ND lift to in this year and should not delay it anymore. Thank you.
of our choosing, not of Boris Johnson's choosing. <laughs> Nor can we be denied by any court the right of self-determination is an inalienable right. You cannot give it away. Westminster is a foreign government. It is not our government. It is a foreign government with which we should have no truck. It is coming time to call back our members of parliament from Westminster and insert our right of national sovereignty and govern ourselves in our own country. We have a completely different political culture to the culture that prevails in England. We have now seen a Tory government which has been completely rejected by the people of Scotland, elected with an overwhelming mandate uh, by the people in England and Wales. We cannot continue like this. We cannot continue to be governed by a people who do not represent us, by a party uh, which is not of our choosing. We wish to have a different kind of state. The United Kingdom state is not a state which abides by international law. It is a rogue state. Scotland has no enemies. We do not wish to make an enemy of the Iran. We do not wish to have any more wars in the Middle East. We do not wish to have any more tension with Russia. We do not want a new Cold War. We do not want to have weapons of mass destruction here in Scotland. We want to have our own peaceful, law-abiding, non-imperialist, non-colonial state in which we can build a society which has no billionaires and has no food banks, in which people can work together in an atmosphere of cooperation in a society which always looks after those who are weakest and less able to look after themselves. And we need now to see action. The time has gone for discussion with Westminster. We will never see a repeat of 2014. In 2014, Westminster agreed to take part in the referendum process purely because none of them believed there was any chance they would lose. When the 2014 referendum was initiated, independence was at 32% in the opinion polls. That's why David Cameron agreed to the process. The United Kingdom government will not give up Scotland with its fantastic mineral resources, its fantastic energy resources, and its fantastic resource as a pool of manpower to maintain the United Kingdom state. The United Kingdom government will not give us independence. We will have to take independence. And if we believe in self-determination, if we actually believe we are a nation, if we believe a people, that we are a people with the right of self-determination, we should not now be asking anybody's permission. We should be going ahead. We should be organizing our referendum. We should be withdrawing our MPs from Westminster and getting on immediately with the job of independence. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much
large numbers of sectorial uh, uh, groups as well, such as women for, uh, in the pensioners for in the Scottish Independence Con Convention, England, English, Scots, the yes, a broad, broad range, as well as we've been bringing in uh, the geographic groups in Scotland. So yes, uh, yes, Edinburgh and Lothians are now members, as are the ID in the independence uh, movement and the, uh, the, uh, the Highlands and, and Islands. And it's so important that we have this overall umbrella organisation. So it's a safe space where we can have conversations, we can, we can talk through, but of course to completely uh, make the point repeatedly that independence is more than one party. Uh, and that you know, the actions of one party cannot, be, uh, cannot bring on a movement down. Now, of course, as Craig was saying, this is a year for action. So, what is the Scottish Independence Convention doing uh, this year? We've got two main uh, uh, activities, campaigns that we're running. The first of those is well, how do we get uh, a referendum? Of course, we'll send the letters been sent, the letter will be ignored. We're asking a fundamentally undemocratic party to act democratically. Well, that's not going to work, is it? And we know that. So on the 18th of, uh, of January, the, the convention is going to meet up in Perth to, to discuss our um, strategy for maximum pressure about how we can get uh, a referendum. But of course, there's no point having a referendum if we're not going to win it. So the other thing that we're uh, uh, doing, and we have been for a while now, um, as you'll see in my, uh, my t-shirt here, we started the Voices in Scotland campaign. Over a year ago we had a fundraiser, we got money from some uh, money which we spent on a free design agency uh, in, in Glasgow to put together a campaign focused on those undecided and unsures and maybe even some of those soft no's and to have a respectful, open conversation with them. It is our strategy ultimately to do what Barney Saunders has done and have a big organising model where there is somebody uh, for Voices in Scotland in every postcode in Scotland and facilitated and helped and brought together by the, uh, the, uh, the organisation. <clears throat> so when I was down uh, a couple of months ago, I had the great pleasure as Vice Convener of the SIC to go down to Wales to speak at uh, the Merth at Temple I see a few of the uh, uh, t-shirts in here. Absolutely amazing event that they had down there. Speaking from a couple of floors up to 5,000 beautiful Welsh faces coming back to us. One of the things that we are, I talked about down there is the difference, the fundamental difference between someone who supports independence in Scotland and someone who doesn't. We did some work um, through Harry Ward University to examine that. It just comes down to this one word, confidence. And no supporter up here has less confidence in both in themselves to sort out problems, but also in the, the, they have less confidence in fellow Scots to sort out the problems and of course take uh, the opportunities that independence will bring. Interestingly, people who are not supporters of Scottish independence are also more risk averse. They're scared of taking a chance. It's not to say that the supporters of independence are crazy, gung ho, run ahead and get stuck in. We're canny Scots. But we know that we have to take some risk in order to create this country because we know that what we have at the moment is not good enough and is not as good, not good as it can be. So I'm going to, uh, um, we, we had at the end of that march um, a confidence building thing where I just got everybody to start cheering. It was absolutely wonderful. We had 5,000 people well, saying, yes, Wales can. Yes, Wales can. My heart's pumping out my chest listening to it. But we know that we, that's not the confidence that we need to build in those people who are not yet supporters of it. The confidence we need to build will only be built through conversation. It's only going to be built through conversations with people that you love and you trust and you respect. And it's going to happen in those open and safe spaces and happen repeatedly. These are not the conversations where we drive statistics down people's throats because uh, we think that's the way to do it. These are the conversations that you have where you come away from them feeling empowered, feeling good and feeling even more bonded to that person you discuss with. So those are the types of, of conversations that Voices in Scotland um, is looking to this uh, facility. So I have two asks for you to, to, uh, today. Will you lend your voice, will you add your voice to the Voices in Scotland campaign that we're starting in a couple of months time? It's time to talk. If so, please go to our website, give us your uh, details, speak to your local yes group, speak to your uh, friends about where you might have some of, organised to have some of these conversations. The other thing I'm going to ask you uh, to, today is, 
will you give five pounds until Scotland is independent? We're up against a highly powerful, high, uh, incredibly manipulated, ruthless, and incredibly well-funded opposition. When we can put together the infrastructure to have a campaign like the Barney Saunders campaign that took a senator that only 3% of American knew about to the most trusted, respected senator and politician in America through this big organization. When we can put that infrastructure together, we can do something what we can, uh, and bring to the, to, to the campaign that all of their money will never be able to do. And that's bring together the brilliant and diverse um, Scottish independent with all of these people having the conversations, building the confidence of those people uh, about themselves and about Scotland as a nation, then we'll have the confidence we need to win our independence. Thank you. Thank you, Ian Black. And um, next up, the journalist, the writer, competitor, please welcome to the stage Valentina Cervera. So, what's her name? I'm ready to go, Valentina. Valentina Cervera Cafe! We foreign people have too many surnames, it's okay. <laughs> well, hello, welcome to Glasgow. Um, yeah, I'm a bit short. <laughs> welcome to sunny Scotland. Often, when I tell people I come from Catalonia, they look at me like if I was mental. Like, why are you going here? And sometimes I ask that question myself too, or when I see my tan function, and when I can get fatter and fatter because we've got no vegetables in this country. <laughs> and, um, but a part of me feels like this has always meant to be my place. I came here when I was 18 with no money and everything I owned fit into the suitcase. And after a few days, I knew I was in the right place. Suddenly, Scotland just became my home. A few months went by and I was addicted to steel game. I drank penance, like a scots, and my beer belly kept growing and growing. <coughs> and I'm not gonna lie, every time I turn the telly on, I'm like, God, it's time to get away, cheeky ball by. <laughs> Without even realizing that, I became one of you, and two years have gone by, and I couldn't be more proud of being a Catalan new spot. My country, as you may know, is also fighting for independence. And I'm here to talk about Scotland today, but I cannot miss the chance to express my solidarity to all the council and political prisoners, and especially to all the <laughs> especially to Oriol Junqueras, who is an MEP, an elected MEP, and still in jail after that shambles of a trial. If we call that justice, I don't know what it was a hundred years ago. I mean. In Scotland and Catalonia, we will get independence because we're both fed up of the bigger fish always telling us we have to do. Scotland is big enough, smart enough, rich enough and to become independent and we will. And we're a 10 out of 10 when it comes to countries, right? We've got the looks, we've got the personality, the intelligence and the money. I mean, Scotland doesn't need the UK just like a woman doesn't need no man. <laughs> and in Scotland, we're constantly told that every time one of our SNP MPs goes out to talk, people boo, people stand up and walk in the House of Commons. The other day, a lord was homophobic to one of our SNP MPs. Like, come on, people, what more do you need to realize UK doesn't care about Scotland? It doesn't care and it never will. Doesn't matter how good they lie. I mean, I bet Boris Johnson couldn't even point the Scotland in a map, even if you had to help him out. We're getting tracked out of the EU against our will. And I mean, guys, let's never forget what Jeremy Cinnamon said. Tell Westminster Tories that Scotland is no longer their slaves. So Alba and Mr. Catalonia, thank you very much. Cheers, thank you. Diolch mawr. Yeah, so my name is Gwion. I'm chair of Yes Cymru Carnarvon. 
up in North Wales. I think I might be one of those scary people Ian was mentioning earlier. I haven't slept last night, Ian. So, you know, ask my wife, she's sitting over there, I'm scary if I haven't slept. Um, so three, you know, thanks for the welcome, but at 3am this morning in Carnarvon, uh, there were 50 or so bleary-eyed uh, Welshmen and women and some children uh, getting onto a bus. It was freezing. Oh, no, no, don't, don't clap because we, we, we weren't we were in a good mood then. It, it was freezing cold. It was black as sin. And we were getting ready to travel to a rainy and windy Glasgow. You know, nothing against Glasgow, but, you know, at 3 a.m. in the morning. Twelve hours later, boy, are we awake and smiling. So, just thanks for the welcome. Yeah, thanks for inspiring us. The problem now for us as Welsh people living in Wales at the moment is that we're not too keen on, on going back home um, with the inroads that the Tories made uh, in some constituencies. And there's no one left in Wales. You know, I was, I was so pleased to see so many Welsh people um, on, on, on the rally, on the march today. Um, many I knew. Um, Many I didn't. Many who'd come up on the bus with us, but there was a bus from, from uh, Merthyr as well. You mentioned Merthyr, and uh, I was there listening to Ian uh, a few months ago. Uh, a minibus came up from Merthyr. There were football fans, Welsh football fans for independence here, people in cars, people, people uh, on trains. Because Wales has awoken as well, at last, to the necessity of independence in Wales. You know, I've joked a lot today with people whilst walking, you know, we're, we're hanging on to your tails and we hope you've got a very long tail because, you know, we're a, bit, we're, we're a fair way behind you. But considering what's happened over the last year, I think Wales has changed dramatically and very quickly. Wales is seeing that we can't be doing any more with this, with this union. Um, some of us have always believed that. But there, as you've experienced, and as you need to experience even more so, there are others, surprising people, uh, coming to the same conclusion. You know, this is an unhealthy, uh, unequal, unworkable union. And unless we get out of it soon, you know, um, there won't be. There won't be a Wales. And that, that sounds dramatic, but especially if you bloody leave us as well, you know. So um, it's always been unhealthy, of course. It's never really worked. Westminster has never really worked for us countries, colonized countries. But if you want an example of, of governance that really doesn't work, well, look at, at, at Johnson, you know, and let's start calling him Johnson, because he is a Johnson. Let's not call him anything else, especially not Boris. Um, you know, Wales, there are areas of Wales, you know, I'm from, from Swansea, but I live up in northwest Wales now, and there are areas of Swansea areas of, of Carnarvon, where I live now, that are amongst the poorest in Wales. And they should be amongst the most prosperous regarding the, the, the resources, the talents, the creativity um, that we have. So something has to be done. And independence, as you know, I'm preaching to the converted here, is the answer. The Tories did gain seats in Wales. You know, it, it, it broke my heart uh, seeing those results come in. But that will only increase the support for independence. Over the past year or so, Indie Wales has become a serious proposition for so many people, a necessity for others. Membership for Yes Cymru has tripled in the last year. Community town and country councils have declared the support for independence. We've, we've had our first independent marches, such as yours. Okay, it might, it might not seem uh, much to you, considering there were, there were so many here today. But the first, we had 3,000 people. You had a few hundred, apparently, you know, so don't get above yourselves. So, Mirtha, there were 5,000, weren't they, in? And then in Carnarvon, 10,000 people came to march on Edward I's castle, Norman Castle, and to reclaim the castle and to drape our flags over it. So things are changing. An, an opinion poll in September, 33% of the Welsh people said that they would vote for independence. A leap from 21%. It would, have, it would have been 41% if that meant staying in Europe. We're getting there. Stay with us. Encourage us. So yes, we will be going back to Wales from here because Wales is changing and Wales needs us. But we need you as well. So come to our rallies as well. Our next rally is April. 
in, in Wrexham, April the 12th. Am I right, Idris Lily? April the 12th. And uh, please come um, and support us. Um, there are interesting times. At four o'clock this afternoon, in the old Burnt Barns Inn, there's a his historic and timely meeting. All in the one banner Scotland, ourselves as Yes Cymru, and Unity Ireland, yes, for Unity Ireland, we're coming together to share ideas, to build bridges, and to think of a way forward. I'm not sure if that's happened before. We've shared things before, we share culture, we share so many things, but for the first time, our grassroots movements are meeting this afternoon to discuss and to move on. Watch out, Westminster. This unhealthy union will crumble. By now, it's not a matter of if, but when. Onwards to a free Scotland and independent Wales. Ymlaen i Gymru. Diolch yn fawr. Thank you. Thank you very much. Go on for that. Thank you. Um, okay, next up we have John Hunter Patterson from the Scottish Independence Foundation. How Scottish. Here I am. I came along to a march. End up doing my first ever press conference. Wonderful, isn't it? The Scottish Independence Foundation was formed about 18 months ago to raise funds to back and support all sorts of activities related to Scottish independence. In the past 18 months, we've raised £130,000. In the past 18 months, we've spent £130,000. And the type of thing we've done supported, yes, East Ayrshire when they had the wonderful plan to sail the Waverley from Largs down to Campbelltown for an all under, all under one banner march. They required eight and a half thousand pounds for a deposit and we were only too happy to provide that money. Sadly, the Waverley boilers blew up and the sailing was cancelled. But just imagine that, what a sight that would have been. The Waverley sailing down the Clyde, flags flying, bagpipes going, full of laughter. What a sight that would have been. We continue, we do not uh, take expenses. There are only four or five of us on the committee. We do not take any expenses or any salaries whatsoever. Every pound that comes into the Independence Foundation goes back out. We do not support any political parties. It's only groups and bodies that are, have good ideas and projects that will advance the cause of independence. But to give money away, we need to get money in. So I'm asking all of you to look at our website, sif.scot, and if you contribute whatever you can on a monthly basis, then we bring that day of independence a lot, lot closer. So we need you, and I'll just finally say a good example of how we work is that All Under One Banner had a slight hiccup uh, prior to the Edinburgh March, and I'm delighted to say that we realise the importance of All Under One Banner to the Scottish independence movement. And we were happy to supply backing for that, one of the most successful marches ever. And we will continue to back anyone that has a good idea that will move independence closer. Thank you. Thank you, John Hunter Patterson there. Thank you very much. Um, next up, Tommy Sheridan. Thank you. Thanks very much, Viv. Can I, can I begin by expressing my admiration and solidarity with Helen, who I've been sitting in awe watching her. She must be the most exhausted member of this audience here today because she has performed a absolutely miraculous, a miraculous task in communicating everything that we have been saying today. She did this several times in Freedom Square at the Hope Over Fear 
demonstrations and she did it with aplomb and she's doing so again today. So well done, Helen. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I'm here representing Hope Over Fear, one of the many grassroots independence campaigns that together with All Under One Banner, Forward is One, the tens of hundreds of Yes campaigns up and down the country, we represent the grassroots heart of the independence movement. And that grassroots heart, in my opinion, has done its job over the years since 2014. Because every year, every single year since 2014, the grassroots independence movement has mobilized tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands in every city, in every town across the length and breadth of Scotland. All under one banner in particular. Last year, we marched, it seemed, everywhere from Auburn to Aberdeen to Inverness to Perth and of course here in Glasgow and the massive monster demonstration in Edinburgh. That was an historic demonstration and it displayed, brothers and sisters, that the independence movement was doing its job. It was mobilising the grassroots in support of Scotland's freedom. We were asked by the de facto political leadership of the independence movement. We were asked by the SNP to do our bit in the campaign and we did it. Brothers and sisters, I think now it is clearly the task of the political leadership of the campaign to do their job and to carry out the commitment that has been given to our movement that there will be Indy Ref 2 in 2020. That's the commitment that was given. That's the commitment that was given, brothers and sisters, and that's the commitment that we rightfully believe should be carried out and as Craig has already eloquently explained, we don't ask permission. We don't ask permission for something that belongs to us. We have never consensually given away a right to self-determination. In 1707, when Scotland's independence was given up, it was given up by the land barons of the day, the rich who never consulted the people, who gave away our independence. Perhaps, perhaps it's a badge of dishonor that it's taken us so long to demand that we get that independence back. But we have never consensually given up the right to self-determination. And that's why we appeal to the SNP, we say to them loud and clear, do not ask Westminster for permission. Announce the date in September or October of this year and carry out the referendum that we have been promised in order to deliver our freedom. Brothers and sisters, as Craig again has said, they gave us a referendum in 2014 because they thought we had no chance of winning. We were sitting at 25 and 30 percent in the polls. We're not sitting at 25 and 30 percent any longer. We're sitting at 50 and 55 percent. Do you think they're going to give us a referendum when the majority are saying they're going to vote for freedom? Of course they won't. They can't afford to give up the supplies of natural gas and oil and land and all the food and beverages that we supply. They can't afford any longer to give up the subsidies. And that's what it is. Please tell your unionists loud and clear when they talk about Scotland's too wee, Scotland's too poor, Scotland's no smart enough. We need 
England. I've got to inform you. Read the facts. Read the figures. Scotland is not subsidised by England. Scotland subsidises England. That's the reality. That's the reality. And we have, we have to ask ourselves, what is democracy? Democracy is not an event. Democracy is not a one-day affair. Democracy is a process. And we accept, we accept in 2014, despite all the odds, we went from 30% to 45. We nearly won, despite all the odds. But we accept that we lost in 2014. What we don't accept is that you give up what you believe is your inalienable right because you lose one vote. We say to all the unionists who say to us, oh, just shut up, just go back in your box, you lost the vote. We say to them, democracy is a process. And then since 2014, there's not been one, there's not been two, there's not been three, there have been four national elections, three of them UK elections, one of them a Scottish election, and in every single one of those four elections, the Party of Independence has won in Scotland. That's a democratic reality. We have got, brothers and sisters, to turn round to Mr Johnson and say loud and clear, Listen to what you said four weeks ago in the run-up to the December election. You said a vote for Labour, a vote for the SNP is a vote not just for one, but for two referendums. Go and read the material that they put in Scotland. Go and listen to what Johnson said. He said if anybody votes Labour, if anybody votes SNP, they're voting for two referendums because Labour said that they recognise the right of the Scottish people to decide when the next referendum takes place. Brothers and sisters, the reason that's important is because 45%, 45% of Scotland voted SNP. They voted for Indir F2. But 18% of Scotland voted Labour in the recognition that Labour was recognising it was Scotland's right to determine Indy Ref 2. In other words, we don't have 45% support for Indy Ref 2. We have 63% support in Scotland for Indy Ref 2. And that's why we as a democratic movement demand that Johnson and the Tories recognise we have democracy on our side. Brothers and sisters, I'll finish my remarks by applauding all under one banner for doing something which is truly remarkable. In the space of less than four weeks, in the midst of festive Christmas and New Year celebrations, and despite the absolutely most foul weather you can imagine, you've still managed to bring onto the streets of Glasgow between 80 and 100,000 people, which in equivalent terms would be 800 to a million people marching through London. We say loud and clear, we've done our job. SNP, we ask you with our hearts, we've given you our votes, we've given you our confidence. You are not in Westminster to settle down. You're in Westminster to settle up. Let's have Indy Ref 2 in 2020. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tommy Sheridan. We moved the mic for you. We didn't have to do that there. Um, okay, so next up from Play Cymru, we're going to have Liz Savile Roberts. And we're going to start in Welsh. I don't know how this is possibly going to end. Diolch yn fawr iawn. Diolch yn fawr iawn. Glasgow, all under one banner. You are an inspiration to us. An inspiration to all of us who've travelled from Wales, who've travelled by, by bus, by train, by car. We've come through this 
hideous weather to be with you today. Whatever the weather has thrown at us, we have been with you today. And we've done that. We've done that because we seek the vital spark of inspiration which you mean for us, which you give us. And I know that vital spark, the point of that, here we are in January, the new year, the new decade, that is what is going to light us through the new decade of the 20s, the whole inspiration, this extraordinary decade that faces us, which will be such a decade of change. And the year, of course, you just heard Tommy say, this will be the year of your independence referendum. The referendum that Boris Johnson would seek to deny you. How dare he? How dare he, that callow, shallow, shameless man? How dare he seek to influence, to control the timetable of your nation, of the independence of your nation? And moving ahead now, it is for us, for Wales. Look at this time. I work in Westminster. I've been working this week. This great change that we're seeing has been brought extraordinarily by Brexit. As we speak today, the Northern Ireland Assembly is reconvening. And what we will see now, and we work, of course, Plaid works with the SNP, with SDLP, with Alliance. We find ourselves talking to the DUP. But all three parliaments of the nations of Ireland and, 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 and the island of Britain are all working now to make sure that Boris Johnson never gets the opportunity to take our powers back from us. So what I seek from you now, what I seek from you so much in the inspiration that we need from you to give us the confidence, to give us the hope to light the way into the decade of the 2020, to light the way of our rallies in Wales. The first one in Wrexham, believe me, it's nearer than the distance we've come for you. Come to Wrexham on April the 18th. You have been such an inspiration to us. You have given us the means. You have given us the confidence. Take us forward. Take us forward for us, for Yes Cymru, the words that we learnt from you, the confidence, the inspiration, the hope. And hope, believe me, friends, hope is what tyrants fear the most. It's easy to despair. It's easy to put the blame on somebody else. It's easy always to find somebody else to make the hard decisions for you. But when hope comes forward, the hope of the new generation in Wales, the hope that we have learnt from you, that is what will break us out of the chains that hold us back. And for you, to you, we are eternally grateful. Diochim Varian. Liz Savile Roberts there, Play Cymru. Um, okay, now from Yes Ireland, we have Michael McLaughlin. Just going to see where he is. Thank you. Uh, all right, folks. Um, my name is Michael McLaughlin. I'm from uh, grassroots, um, non party political, uh, anti sectarian and peaceful campaign group called Yes for Unity. Um, firstly, I'd like to say never underestimate um, the power and the transformative ideas that, that's happening here in Scotland now at the moment. We're learning a lot of lessons. Um, we're, we've come over here, we were stewarding at the march today, we're engaging with the organisers, <laughs> and we want to bring those ideas and, and the, the methodology of organising that's happening here and in Scotland back to Ireland. We, we, we want to bring it back and, and, and show people that, listen folks, there, there's um, an idea here, there's methodology, there's a way of doing things that can be peaceful and can um, be transformative, like what what the what the British Union, the UK Union, means to me. Like um, I'm from a working class nationalist uh, town, um, Straban in County Tyrone. You no, know, uh, a place that was occupied and brutalised um, for 40 years, uh, abandoned post-conflict, huge prescription drug epidemic, 
suicides, um, poverty, zero war contracts. You know, that's what the British Union represents to us. Like, London are a gang of gangsters, robber barons. Like, they're like, taking the wealth uh, out of working class people's pockets and giving it to those who are already rich and don't need it. Now, we want to use Irish unity as a transformative process. We want to use Irish unity as um, a way of engaging, re-engaging with people, working class communities, um, about how they want to govern themselves, about giving them their own power, about moving into some 32 county social economic framework in Ireland that we can use the smash uh, right wing ways of thinking, smash austerity and give control uh, of Irish unity to the Irish people. Um, why don't you just use this platform to send out a short message um, to the political parties back home. Uh, Stormont Executive has reconvened today. In the entire agreement to bring Stormont back, there's absolutely no mention of the words Irish unity or Irish unity referendum. It's not on their political agenda. But we want to send a clear message to them that the grassroots are awake, activists are awake, people are having conversations with each other who never spoke to each other before in their, in their lives. There's organising going on. Like, the biggest mistake, Sinn Féin, the SDLP, Finn Fall, Finn Gael, and the Irish political establishment can make is to try and stop momentum towards Irish unity. Now is the time to have the conversation, have the national debate. What's a United Ireland going to look like? How, is it going to, how are we going to protect basic working class demands? Now is the time to start that debate in Ireland. Prepare for Irish unity. Prepare the conversation. Don't make the mistakes of Brexit where you rush headlong and it. We need a national debate and working class interests need to be at the centre at their debate. Thanks very much. Thank you, Michael McLaughlin there. And we have two more speakers to go, ladies and gentlemen. So um, our penultimate speaker will be um, David Younger from Digital Covenant. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I would like to introduce you to an innovative way of holding a referendum. It's called the Digital Scottish Covenant. It is not yet another petition. It's detailed on our website, which comes live tomorrow, the 12th of January, and signatures can be collected from that time onwards. The purpose of the covenant is to demonstrate in a secure form that cannot be challenged that a number, hopefully, hopefully um, a big number of Scots want independence. If we can achieve more than 50% on the covenant, it is a very, very clear message to the central government of Westminster that Scotland intends to take independence. Now, the covenant itself is not connected with any individual political party. Um, we do this deliberately because we don't want to get involved in party politics. We don't want to start having arguments about whether you like the SNP or the Green Party or whatever. It's all about one question and one question only, and that is independence. Now, the Covenant will also have no bearing on what whatever um, methods the SNP are adopting to gain another referendum under Section 30. It's got nothing to do with that at all. If the SNP succeed and we have our referendum, all well and good. If they don't, the Covenant exists. And the Covenant is open for signatures until December the 31st this year. So you have plenty of time to examine it, to go on the website, to ask whatever questions you need, but your vote will be secure. It's enabled by blockchain, and this will be the world's first digital referendum. 
It is provable, it is legal, and we have a methodology for taking it forward once we reach a majority of signatures. Um, now that methodology is set out again on our website, but it does involve taking the matter further. This is not simply a case of collecting signatures, being ignored, and then going on with something else. Um, this is really about saying, if all else fails, we know that we have got a majority for independence. We want to call our MPs back, hold an independence convention, and declare independence. Bring, bring the SNP on board, I'm sure they will come on board, but declare independence. This is the people of Scotland speaking, not a political party, not a political agenda, and we are not working according to the Scotland Act. We're working, as Craig Murray puts it, we're working to the agreement that Scotland has sovereign authority and, that, and we can exercise that sovereign authority and we do so through the covenant. So I would urge you all please to, to um, go on the website, have a look at it, ask whatever questions you like. The admin team are always available and always very willing to answer these questions. Um, and, and if you want to bring up any awkward questions, then we'll answer those too. Um, but we really must get this moving. We must get the impetus for it. We've been handing out information. We've, we've made one um, uh, attempt at, at publicizing it so far. There are others on the way. Uh, we have a, a, a full press release package due to go out very shortly. So you will hear much, much more about the digital government as, as things go on. Um, but I would urge you to get on board now as quickly as possible. We want to gain some momentum to make this thing work and to be able to tell Westminster that we mean business and that this will do the trick. Because it will, I promise you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, David. And um, our last speakers up, please welcome Wendy MacDonald and Keir McKechnie.
thousands were unable to make it today. Last year, around 400,000 people marched across the towns, cities and villages of Scotland. Next year, we hope to take those numbers up into the millions. And we are confident there's all under one banner that we can do that. And one of the reasons we know we can do it is because we already know there are hundreds of yes groups, yes hubs, trade unionists for yes, NHS for yes, English Scots for yes, that has been a huge growth in grassroots activist groups being set up across Scotland and that is what is the core of the mobilisations that under all under one banner are able to organise. But there's something more fundamental here which is why our movement has grown and that is the election of Boris Johnson. And all under one banner would like to take this opportunity to serve notice to the Tory government and to the union that we're not asking for independence from Boris Johnson or indeed from Nicola Sturgeon of the SNP, we are demanding in their F2. It's the Scottish people's right to decide and we are demanding that that happens this year. And not only are we demanding it, but we are stating very clearly that this notice has been served because we are not willing to put up with another five years of Tory austerity. We are not willing to put up with the privatisation of our NHS and we're not willing to put up with the horrendous hostile environment that this Tory government is pushing on refugees and immigrants. We say refugees are welcome here and we oppose the racism of Boris Johnson and the Tory party. We're also serving notice on the Trident missiles on the Clyde. We don't want them here and we'll mobilise as one of the key reasons for independence to get Trident subs off the Clyde and to use that money and invest it in our schools or hospitals and to defend our NHS. We're also serving notice on the climate polluters. We're serving notice that we want a green environment. We want green jobs. We don't want to ruin our environment. We need to save the planet, dare I say it, from these capitalist bastards who are going to destroy it. That's what All Under One Banner represents. And that is what we will be mobilising for. As Wendy quite rightly said, we have a programme next year of seven demonstrations. And our intent, if we don't get in the F2, is that we are serious that we will make Scotland ungovernable until we receive the details of India F2. This is a mass movement. We are not on our own. We're part of a global movement. We're seeing the young people taken to the streets across the UK to save the planet. We've seen demonstrations in Chile, Brazil, the Lebanon. We are part of an internationalist movement and all under one banner are proud to be leading that movement. Which is why my final comment is we want to give a plug to the all under one banner National Assembly on the 15th of February in Glasgow where we're inviting the yes groups the key groups across Scotland to come and join us at that conference to discuss the strategy and the tactics to make sure that we end Tory rule in this country and that the Scottish people get the opportunity to have a referendum and finally put the nail in the coffin of the British state. Come and join us. You're welcome and thanks for your efforts in making this a huge success. See you, Labra. Thank you very much. I just thank you all the speakers. Thank you for being here. Um, big massive thanks to Helen who's been amazing and um, to of course all the marchers. India F2, on you go. Yes.